Bambi is a national and international transgender Latina woman. She just obtained her master's degree in Latino studies, and she is the <laughs> and she is the president and CEO of the Trans Latino Coalition, a national organization that focuses on addressing the issues of transgender Latinx. Um, and she, Bambi developed the Center for Violence Prevention and Transgender Wellness. She's also been responsible for starting um, many other, uh, several other, birthing several other organizations. Uh, I know that we have been working together now for at least a couple of years, two, I don't know, it seems like maybe two or three years. Um, and, um, she, you know, the work that, that is happening under Bambi's leadership is it just exemplary and um, Bambi is a squeaky wheel and that's what we need, right? And um, I, I, it is my pleasure to have her here to share, come on up Bambi, to share with all of you. We've been talking all week about the need to look beyond just a, taking a very siloed approach We've been trying to make sure that the speakers here are doing that, and Bambi is going to talk to us and, and helpfully inspire us into action as well. So thanks, Bambi. Buenos dias a todos y a todas. Primero que nada, a mí me gusta darle gracias a mi poder superior por darme la oportunidad de estar aquí con ustedes. También quiero dar gracias a la gente indígena de esta tierra y quiero también pedir permiso para decir unas palabras ante ustedes. For those of you who were not able to understand, I just acknowledge my higher power for giving me the opportunity to be here with all of you today. I also want to honor and acknowledge the land where we're standing on today, and ask permission to the indigenous people from this land to allow me to say a few words to you. Can we also give it up for our amazing interpreters who are, who are helping us to send the message that needs to be sent to all of us. I also want to honor the at least 19 trans women of color who have been murdered this year due to the stupidity and fucked upness that we experience within our society. <laughs> if I can also ask the power in the house of those individuals who are trans and gender non-conforming individuals to please come and join me on the stage. If you're brave enough and courageous enough to come with me and stay beside me, I would really appreciate it. Thank you. Please do not feel obligated. This is just something for us to show everyone who we are. Huh? It's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Can you please come to the podium and say your name? Can, please, can you please come to the podium and say your name? Miranda Styers. Thank you. Please. I'm Zane Stevens. Thank you. I'm M. Joy. Lee Watts. I'm Madeline Ambrosini. Samantha Montemayor. Sasha Navarro. Erika de la Cruz. Lisa Ceballos. 
Liat Wexler. Yeah. Dalton. <laughs> Gio Elgin. Skylar Cantola. Yes, Skylar! Norio Umezu Hall. Eric Bjorkman. Thank you. Akila Powell. And I am Michelle Pulido. Thank you all. Can we please give some love to our siblings? Can we give some love like we really mean it? Thank you. I honor you. Thank you. I honor your presence. Thank you. Thank you so much for your courage. I wanted for us to acknowledge, obviously, our siblings. It is important that we understand that we are integrated within our society. And sometimes, actually, a lot of times, or most times, we do not want to acknowledge our trans and gender non-conforming siblings. I really love the theme of this conference, bold moves, right? But what does that really mean to us? Are we going to be bold doing the work that we're doing, including those of us who are the most marginalized? Are we going to be bold enough to say, stop the racism that exists in our society? Are we going to be bold enough to say, stop the ignorance that still exists within our society? You know, yesterday was an amazing plenary. And thank you so much to the young people who are doing amazing work. Yes, give it up for them. But we also have to be bold enough to value the contributions that our young people are bringing, not only to this work, but also to our society. Yesterday, we also heard some statistics about indigenous people, indigenous women particularly, who get disappeared and never get acknowledged. But do we know statistics about trans people? Do we know the violence that we experience every single day as trans women when we walk out of our homes, if we have a home? I have to acknowledge my privilege. I am a very privileged trans, Latina, immigrante, indocumentada, who is standing here before you. Unfortunately, for me to get to this stage before you, I had to experience many different struggles. But I am privileged enough to have overcome and overturned my experiences into opportunities. My experiences that I have overcome and overturned have been sexual abuse, homelessness, sex work, drug addiction. I have been also um, systematically incarcerated. I spent 14 years of my life in the state penitentiary here in California because there wasn't opportunities for me. And I have to acknowledge my privilege, but I also have to let you know that the experiences and the, the experiences that I had to overcome are the same experiences that my trans sisters continue to experience today. Our young people continue to be sent to the streets because of the ignorance 
there still is within our society. But are we gonna be bold enough to transform the system that continues to oppress us? Are we going to be bold enough in our organizations, even if we don't have the, I guess, what do, what do you call it, like upper management? Or, yeah, even if you don't have that kind of power, are you gonna be bold enough to say something when you see some injustice? And I think that's the challenge that we have today that we're going to take with us. Because it's cute to come here and hear the theme, but are we, not, are we going to take it to heart? Are we going to be bold enough to say enough is enough? I invite you to do that. I invite you to really understand that to be bold, and in order for us to be bold, we need to start being bold with ourselves so that we can then, in turn, transform the fucked upness that we continue to experience within our society. You know, it has been a long road for me to get here, where I'm at today. And for that, I want to thank Calcasa and the organizers of this conference for thinking that I could be worthy of coming here to share my experience, strength, and hope. I'm very appreciative. But it wasn't easy for me to get here. Our organization started in 2009 and it wasn't until January of 2016 when we finally got a grant from someone, an organization that was bold enough to trust and to understand that only us can understand the experiences that we experience and that only us can do the work that we have to do for our people. I have the privilege to work with amazing people. You met some of these people here. You met some of those people through the conference. The work that we do is not easy. We just recently, this year, we were also fortunate enough to get funding from the California Office of Emergency Services to provide services to trans and gender nonconforming people who are victims of violence, or who have been victims of violence. They were bold enough to give us the opportunity to demonstrate that we are capable of doing the work, that we are capable of administrating funds, that we are capable of transforming and changing the landscape of our community. That's what we need to do. We need to be bold enough to understand that in order for us to transform, we need to transform ourselves first. We need to be open-minded, we need to be open-hearted, and we need to be unapologetic about the work that we do. Woo! I can talk all day long about the work that we have done, but I can tell you very briefly that in just two years, we have built the Center for Violence Prevention and Transgender Wellness. We have a drop-in center here in Los Angeles we get food every day, lunch. We have amazing team and we have great people, volunteers, who are supporting us to do that work. We have clothing. We have an, a um, re-entry program where we support trans and gender nonconforming people who are getting released from immigration detention centers, jails, prison. We have workforce development. We're in the process of setting up our legal department. We're in the process of setting up our mental health services. And we are transforming the way society is looking at us because our presence and our existence within our society has been trying to be erased. 
institutional violence has manifested in our lives in many different forms. But we are resilient, we are strong people, we are intelligent people, we are creative people, and we are transforming the way people look at us. Many of us think that just because some trans people are in the media or in the, you know, like magazines, movies, whatever, right? That our social issues have been addressed. But that's not necessarily true. It's only a few of us, and I'm gonna say us because I am also one of those who have the privilege to be and the eye of our society. But we also need to give opportunities to those who are also creative, who are also bold enough to be themselves and to live themselves authentically, unapologetically. Can we do that? Yes. Can we do that? Yes. Can we fucking do that? Yes. That is my charge to you today. I hope that you take not only this, the theme of this conference, but the work that needs to be done with you. And that you are willing and able to open your mind and your heart and to understand that yes, we can transform our society, but we can't do it if we only start with ourselves. I don't know how, how much time I have. I don't know how much time I've been talking, but I can, oh shit, I'm just gonna read a quick poem. I, wanna, I was, I'm like right here and I'm not even like, did you give me like a five? Oh damn, you know? When, when I'm, I'm, I'm not like, like up here, I'm like in a whole other atmosphere. So I, I did write a poem, uh, about, uh, about four years ago um, that I, I wrote to society. So I wanna share with you um, that, I, I'm gonna put this to the side so that there's no like interference or whatever. Um, it's gonna be like three minutes maybe? Okay. So um, this, poem, this poem is called Aquí Estoy. Aquí Estoy in the middle of these intersections, in el medio donde veo, where I see everything that is coming my way. Aquí estoy, living these experiences, living the intersections that I have been dealt, living in poverty and not in wealth. Yo soy mexicana. Latina, trans, inmigrante, sobreviviente de la violencia. I am an statistic. I am one who is invisible. I am one who is not recognized by you, by you who chooses to be blind, by you who chooses to be unjust, by you who chooses to be cruel, and not right, but then, according to you, who am I? Aquí estoy, en el medio, soportando, acordando with labels that you have given me, not by my choice, because you have been chosen those for me, and to think that those labels are supposed to me look better, look at me, I am still me, the intersection who is walking. I am who I am, y aquí estoy, challenging you, challenging me, dealing with you and dealing with me, dealing with todas mis intersecciones that crosses my mind and oftentimes crosses my heart. But it is you who crosses my life. It is you who tells me that I am no one. 
It is you who tells me that I'm not worth it. It is you who often tells me that I am not me. Aquí estoy, en el centro, seeing this intersection, and what do I do? What can I do? Nothing but live and try to, un to shuffle the cards that you have been giving, not with my choice, but to play your game and to do the best that I can always with the hope that at some point I will win, but win what? Aquí estoy, playing your game, seeing how you play with my life. I get discriminated because of who I am, because of where I am from, because of how I look, because how I speak, because I am trans. Aquí estoy, con mi sombra, con mi luz, with my might and all my bright, but whose is it? Is it you or you or maybe none of you? Pero aquí estoy, centrada in the middle of everything that is going on, on me, against me, towards me, to me. Aquí estoy con mi realidad, con mi verdad, in la intersección, in the middle of nowhere, everything coming my way, and what do you see? How do you see me? How do you see those who look like me? Aquí estoy, feeling the pain, the pain of seeing my sisters being killed, seeing how you think it's okay to kill me, how you think it's okay to kill us, how you, how you continue to be unjust, not recognizing my place, not recognizing our space, not recognizing us. But I'll tell you what, even if you kill me, and even if you kill us, I'll tell you, we will always exist because we are part of the mother. We are part of the same. We are part of you and you are part of us. And even if you kill me, and even if you kill us, we will always be here because our spirits live. Not just mine, but the spirit of all of us. You can kill my sisters and you can kill me, but you will not kill my strength. You will not kill my power. You will not kill my soul. You will not kill mine or the memory of those who have been here before me. You will not kill the true essence of who I am, not the true essence of who we are, because we are and we always will be. Aquí estoy, in this intersection. Your laughs, your ugly and untruthful claims about me, about us, even though painful, made me feel strong and grateful. Aquí estoy, viviendo, sufriendo, sobresaliendo, triunfando y a veces llorando, viviendo my dream, the dream to be free, the dream that one day I could just be me. Aquí estoy, dreaming, that when I see myself in the in middle of these intersections, I can come to be who I truly am, because I am. I can come to be who I truly am, just as I am, without you telling me that I am not me. Aquí estoy, soñando y esperando for the day that I could simply be me. Muchas gracias.